all, it's Emily Rand with ESPN Esports, and I'm joined by Misfits new bot laner, Kabe, uh, who is now back in Europe after one, one split in North America. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much for joining me. Um, how was your trip back, and what's it been like to be back uh, in Europe thus far? Um... Yeah, so it's been a long off season for me. I was basically stuck in LA for the most part of it, and I just got back about like four days ago or something. Uh, so I've only been in Berlin now for four days, and yeah, I mean I'm just really happy to be here again. It was kind of some hard times for me the past past month for maybe a bit longer. So yeah, I'm just feeling very happy again. So that's good. Uh... I'm actually going to start further back. We're going to touch on that <laughs> in the middle of the interview, but I guess I want to start further back in coming to North America initially, um, because even as early as like week two uh, in a few interviews that you did, you talked about how uh, TSM was a bit slow coming together um, and making the transition from Europe to North America was a little bit rough. So what was your initial transition to North America like? And what were your first impressions of the TSM team when you did get there? Um, I guess I got I had pretty good first first hand impressions. Uh it's not like anything crazy, but I felt like I could see skill here and there. Um from all of the players and the transition was pretty rough I would say because like we started facing issues early on, as you mentioned, and it was hard to put my all my energy on that when I just like moved my whole life over there. I had to like every day I was waking up earlier than I should because I had to do other stuff with like you know insurance and I'm moving places and uh, just all all stuff like this. Um, so that took a lot of time and it was hard for me to put like just have all that in the back so I couldn't really focus fully on the game. Which made me really stressed because obviously it was going to shit kind of how we were playing and <laughs> our showing week one was horrible. And uh, yeah, that's I think it was a pretty rough start in the tr transition, but then it like got better during the weeks. And then when the corona thing hit, it started going downhill again. So one thing like... There, there are two things to touch upon here. One is just how the pandemic generally affected teams, right? Like making the transition from LAN to offline. But then also uh, TSM, this past split, really seemed torn between two different play styles, right? This like aggressive top lane focus, like early game focus play style and a more slower paced mid to late game. Um, I actually thought initially that you were going to fit on this TSM team really, really well, um, because I see you as someone who knows laning matchups and also is an incredible team fighter. Um, so describe to me the kind of tension in TSM's play style. Like what was going on on the team from like an analytical standpoint in terms of how, how you guys were deciding how you wanted to play? Mm, so I think we had a lot of disagreements about just how we want to play the game fundamentally. And yeah, a lot of clashes, problems between coaching staff and players, and just also players just having different ideas on how we want to play. And eventually, we reached like some sort of style of what we think is good. But I think for me, like I've reflected on it. I feel like I didn't have my best split, but I don't feel like I I did anything particularly bad. Like I feel like I did what I usually do, and it just simply didn't work work out at all uh, because of different reasons um i wasn't working very well with j just a whole team play towards bot lane and the rest of the team was not very great and that's like one thing that made it hard for me to do much and then second our team fighting as a team was absolutely horrible it's like yeah i mean it, it sounds harsh but it, it's like uh, no, no i mean i agree i'm just glad you're saying it and not me right because um you'll you'll get that, less flack for saying it <laughs> that that's just like something that was also made it really hard for me because you know from, throughout my career i've taken both the carry role i've taken the role playing role so uh bb for example he was really good at playing carries top and getting a lot of attention and that got us some wins right 
and I'm fine taking the you know the backseat role in the bot lane because as long as I'll be fine in later game for for team fighting, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the problem was that we were so bad at team fighting that I couldn't even like show my strength there really. So then I just felt pretty useless and felt like there was not much I could bring. So that was at least for me what I felt was really hard in like trying to shine in this team. One thing that I always like to ask players who have been to North America and then return to their other regions, just because it's a massive issue that every single person who's not from North America comes to North America and talks about. And you've actually commented on this in other interviews. Why are North American teams so passive? Just generally, well, like, why are they so afraid? I mean, I don't know. It's. <laughs> For, for, I mean, I guess you're you're right in that. For me, the the biggest difference was just that uh, I just feel like people don't really know what to do most of the time, or they just play so standard that it's like really easy to predict everything that's gonna happen in the game unless you're playing against Cloud9. I think the overall level of the NALCS was extremely low, like even lower than previous years, the Spring Split, and yeah, most of the time I just I mean, a lot of games that go really long, you know, our first game was a 60 minute banger, right? And that was just a result of both teams not knowing what to do and just having no clue how to play their comps or finish the game. So it's it's, it's like a lack of knowledge or people just don't have the same mindset as a lot of EU players do. Um, I, I, I can't really pinpoint exactly because I mean, I just feel the difference, right? I just got back here for, and I already feel it even in the solo queue that it's just different. And from my teammates I played with already, mentality is just very different. Um, so that's a lot of things. I always, I have to ask, because it's something that like everyone comments on and everyone knows is a problem and no one uh, has a solution. Um, generally this, this off season, how surprised were you to hear about the double lift announcement and how did you end up on misfits uh, i mean i was pretty surprised i would say it was we played against flyquest we lost that series 3-2 um a few days after we had some talks about uh, feedback for each other like between players and and stuff and I think it was like not more than a day after that, like a few days after our playoffs match, I just get told that there's a chance that they're looking to trade double lift on the team. And I'm, at, at that point, I was really surprised because, I mean, the feedback for me was pretty simple. They wanted either me or my support, uh, Biofrost, to take more charge in communication of the team or like have a louder voice. And that comes back from like first week. Like, I think we had a lot of. A lot of disagreements on how a team should run and how people should operate and shot calling and these kind of things where i tried really hard to change to something that i just don't agree with right but i tried really hard and it was just not really possible um so based on all that i feel like given the split we had i just didn't really expect it right um and definitely like i didn't come there to just you know play one split and and off to home, right? Um, so yeah, the, the timeline after that, it's... Actually, I'm trying to remember what happened after. Yeah, I was pretty sad because I didn't really hear anything for some weeks. And I was just like, okay, I guess I guess it's happening. You know, they're already playing duo queue together. You know, double lift and the other players, even after nothing is official. Uh, it's on stream, they're leaking stuff and that whole situation was just like really awful, right? And I had really low I'm hopes. I'm so for... sorry. That's <laughs> that is awful. Like I'm just I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh, I mean, I was it was a really rough time, right? I'm not gonna lie about that. But I'm ultimately I'm really happy how it turned out because my hope was so far down. Like when I heard about alternatives, I didn't want to go to another NA team because the only reason I came there was to play in. A top team, you know, I want to win there, otherwise it's not worth it. Uh, so when I heard that Misfits was an opportunity, I was really excited for that. And yeah, I'm just really happy. I, because it's also like the NA and trading stuff. Um, 
ultimately I'm really happy about TSM letting me kind of decide what I want to do. And yeah, that's like, I know a lot of people are on them for other things that are happening, but that was like the, what turned it around for me. Cause if I couldn't go to do what I want and go back to you playing a team like Misfits, I would be a really sad person today. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Misfits. Cause they were kind of, I think they surprised a few people, uh, last split with people kind of not knowing where they would end up, uh, specifically because people didn't know a ton about Razark or Genic coming in. Um, what do you think you can bring to this Misfits team? Uh, I think I will bring uh, some more veterans here to the squad. There's Fabian, who I think we're about the same age, but I think he has like one more year of playing than me, maybe. Um, and then the rest of the players are kind of newer towards the, the scene in general. They haven't been playing for more than one year at most. So that's where I feel like I can help a lot in terms of just veterancy. Um, being like, or like hoping to somewhat set an example towards like how to do a lot of things inside, outside of the game. Just trying to help as much as I can. Um, that's like stuff I want to do for myself, right? Because I feel like I should be bringing those stuff. Uh, but otherwise, I think I just bring a strong, reliable player that will just eventually raise the skill level of the team. Like, I I've seen some LEC here and there during the split. I don't think the previous AD was necessarily bad or anything. And I haven't watched enough games to comment on that at all. Um, but yeah, those are some of the things I think I can bring to this team. Have you, how much have you been able to practice with them? Or you said you just got there like four or five days ago, so. Yeah, I got there four days ago and I'm still, or the jet lag is kind of going away, <laughs> but I've, I've just been spamming solo queue or duo queue with like Denig and Fabian and just getting to know these guys and starting to play with them. And yeah, I'm just spamming the game right now to try to get good again, I guess, since I think I took a short break and I wasn't playing much solo queue the past month while I was just stuck in NA because I didn't feel like it provided me much. Um, and I feel like it kind of hurt me in a way because when you play on high ping for a longer time, and I, I was even playing on EU server with 160 ping because there are some times where I just couldn't be bothered, right? And I feel like I just took a bit of damage of that. so. I feel like I'm slowly getting my skill level back and it that feels fun in a way because I know I'm much better than yeah you know I was four days ago already so th that nice. process is just fun you know trying to get good again yeah no I mean so it like always feels good to improve um in North, in uh in Europe right now the situation despite uh, a few losses this past uh split is that G2 is still like undisputed on top of everything. How does a team go about beating G2? Mm, I think Fnatic was actually looking better than them throughout the spring split. Maybe because, I mean, obviously G2 tried to change Caps and Perks position and in playoffs as well, you know, they lost to Mad Lions and that kind of, I mean, I don't know, I wasn't playing that split, right? But must have made other people feel like that they were really beatable, right? Uh, but in the end, something happened and they just sweep the final. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's just pretty simple. I think there's, you cannot worry about one team too much, like, because besides G2, there's like, several other teams that are really close to them, I think. Like, I don't think they are miles ahead as they were, let's say, last year. Um, mm. I think other teams are kind of catching up to them. Or, I mean, just from the outside looking at it, I might be wrong. But at least that's the mindset I kind of like to have, because I feel like if you just think that, okay, these guys are too good, unbeatable, then you already lost, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just try to look for their mistakes and focus on yourself. I mean, at, better... least, at least for us, because we have a house and now there's even like four spots for Welsh, right, in the EU. Mm -hmm. And also just to win the title, there's there's other teams we have to go through other than G2. So 
just focusing on ourselves is kind of the step I would take, at least for now. Um, or it just gets too over overwhelming. No, I mean, it's a good strategy to take. I feel like most teams that have won Worlds, at least for the past two years, just because Chinese teams have hyper-focused play styles, have focused way more on themselves and their own play style than going up against specific opponents. Mm. Um, what are your goals as a player, just for yourself, uh, this split? Um, I mean, the same as usual, I think. Uh... Every every time I go into a split, I have the goal I want to win the split, and the yearly goal is going to Worlds, very standard. Um, and kind of, I mean, I always want to prove myself, right? It's not like that's something I actually got asked a lot, and sure, there's like more fire in me right now to prove it after a kind of rough time, um, and especially just, I mean, I feel like here people still know who I am and respect me for what I do and know what I can do, but it didn't really feel as appreciated when I was playing in America. And that's just like, I'm just coming back here to, to keep proving myself. Like no matter what split or what game, I always want to do it in every single game. All right. Well, good luck. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're back in Europe and, and happier. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way NA treated you. Um, thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. Seriously, this is great. Uh, it was really fun to sit down with you. Um, and for more League of Legends and esports content, keep it here on ESPN Esports.